In this video, I'm going to show you how to analyze your soil data. So your soil data, once you download it from CoLab, will look something like this. Um, other lab sections than mine might have, you know, more replicates than mine. Uh, I'm just going more off the lab manual. Others might have, you know, extra seasons or extra years worth of data. But all the analysis will be about the same. So uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to calculate the average of each of our variables that we collect data for, as well as the standard error of those averages. And so to calculate the average for our organic horizon depth, um, we're going to hit the equal sign, type average, open bracket. And uh, so this is for site one. And so site one, we measured three um, replicates of organic horizon depth. So we'll select all of those three replicates for site one, and we'll close the bracket and hit enter. And so you can see the average of these three values is 3.8 centimeters. We'll go ahead and fill this out for um, our, other our other four sites. So equals average like that, equals average that, all right. And so one of the cool things about Excel is that once you have all of these um, averages calculated for one column, you can go ahead and highlight all of them. And then in the lower right hand corner, there will be this little plus sign that pops up. If you click and then drag that across the other variables, it'll go ahead and automatically calculate the average for each um, variable that you're interested in. All right, so once you have the averages for each of your um, soil variables, we'll go ahead and calculate the same, the, we'll go ahead and calculate the standard error. And we'll do it in the same way where we just calculate the standard error for one column, and then we'll click and drag it across to automatically populate the rest of them. So equals standard deviation, which is STDEV, open bracket. We'll select our data. And the difference between the standard deviation and the standard error calculation is that the standard error takes into account um, the, the number of replicates you have. So this will be standard deviation divided by the square root, which is SQRT, of your sample size. So here, our sample size is uh, three since we took three measurements. So you can just put a three in there and then hit enter. And so we have um, an average O horizon depth for site one that is 3.8 centimeters plus or minus 0 0.8 centimeters. So we'll go ahead and fill this out for the rest of our sites. And just like we did for the average values, we'll um, highlight all of the calculations we made for O horizon depth. And in the lower right hand corner, we'll get the plus sign to pop up just by hovering over top of it. We'll click and we'll drag that across. And we'll have um, Excel will automatically populate the standard error table here with the correct um, data. 
And so we'll use these averages and standard errors to make a series of um, column plots. And the way we do that is, for example, we'll highlight the over horizon depth column here. We'll go to insert, recommended charts. And the, the first chart that pops up is the one that we're gonna want. But if for some reason yours is different, you can go to all charts, you go to column, and then the first sort of um, column that pops up here is the clustered column. It looks like this. You select it and hit OK. And so just like in the other videos, we're going to go ahead and make this look a little prettier. And then we'll um, copy the, the nicely formatted um, figure here. And we'll, we'll copy it and we'll paste it. And that'll make making several figures a lot quicker. So let's start by just getting rid of the title by selecting it and hitting delete. Same with these horizontal bars. We can start with our X axis here. So let's select that and then right click format axis. We'll go to this paint bucket line. And we'll go to solid line. Make sure that the solid line is black. We'll make sure that there are tick marks by going over to axis options, down to tick marks, major type outside. Let's make um, our different sites here. Let's make that font legible. Let's go up to home here on the top. Make sure that the text is black. And we'll go to a font size 12. Now let's do the same thing for our y-axis here. So let's select your y-axis, go over to the paint bucket, solid line, it's black. We'll do the tick marks. We'll make the font size, um, we'll make the font color black and the font size 12. And you see there's extra decimal place here and they're all zeros. So we can go ahead and get rid of those. And the way you do that is you stay in access options, scroll down to number. And we'll go to decimal places and we'll set that to zero. All right, so let's make the border around our figure here. So let's just select inside the plot area. We'll go to the paint bucket border solid line make sure it's black and it is and we'll get rid of this light gray line around our figure and we'll do that by just selecting somewhere between the plot area and the chart area and so we'll just select in there and then we'll go to no line and that gets rid of our light gray line around the whole figure all right, so let's make our um, columns here not be colored. So we'll select inside the columns. We'll go to the paint bucket. For the border, we'll go to solid line. And then we'll go to fill. And to save on ink, we'll go to solid fill and select white. All right, now we're getting to make this look good. Let's add our axis titles. So select inside your chart area and go to this plus sign. If the plus sign doesn't pop up for some reason, you can always go up to, um, you, can, you can always select inside your chart and then go to design element chart, add chart element, excuse me, and scroll down to axis titles. All right, so let's change our y-axis to be O horizon depth and add our units as always, which is in centimeters. Um, let's go ahead and make uh, the font color here black and the font size 
12. Our x-axis here is going to be our site. And so we'll change that to be font color black, size 12. And then the last thing that we need to do is we need to add the standard error bars to our figure here. And so the way you do that is you can click inside, go to the plus sign here, go down to error bars, select the little offshoot arrow, and go to more options. We'll go down to custom and specify values. And this is where our standard error calculations come into play. So let's remove the default that Excel puts in and then hit uh, equal sign and select our standard errors for our average values. And you're going to put in the same information for the positive error value and the negative error value. Because remember, your um, error measurement is always plus or minus your, your error measurement. OK, and if you hit OK, now you have the correct error bars and you have the correct um, figure for your soil data. You're going to have to create a similar figure, uh, this time using your soil moisture, soil temperature, and slope angle. And you know the quick and easy way to do this, of course, is to select your, your figure, hit Control-C, and somewhere outside of your figure, hit Control-V. And then you just tell Excel to, to look for the data somewhere else, just like that. And so now this is looking, now this is soil moisture. Uh, so you'll have to go in and re, um, reset your error bars. You'll have to reset the, the color of the actual bars themselves. And then you'll have to reset the Y axis label. But this is a much faster way than going through the whole process that we just went through for the O horizon depth. Okay, and then so you guys are also going to have to fill out a soil table that has the linear regressions for these five different relationships. So we have uh, soil temperature as our X variable and soil moisture for our Y variable. So let's go ahead and just fill out this first relationship and I'll save the rest for you guys to do. But this relationship, we're gonna have the raw soil temperature data as our X variable and the raw soil moisture data as our Y variable. Okay, so let's switch back over to the soil data tab. We'll go to data, data analysis, Scroll down to regression, hit OK. We'll make sure that the labels text, this labels box is checked. The X range is, again, that's going to be soil temperature. So hit equal sign, soil temperature. Select our soil temperature data. And then the Y is going to be soil moisture. Oh, excuse me, I didn't include the titles as I should have in the X. So soil temperature is inclusive of the, the title when we have the labels selected. And it's always recommended that you select the labels. And then the Y will be the soil moisture. Everything else can be left as it is. And we'll hit OK. And so here is our um, output for our linear regression. And so we'll use this information to fill out our soil table. So for example, the slope of this linear regression is equal to this value here. And you hit enter. The y-intercept, that's equal to this value here. The R squared value 
that's equal to this value. And our p-value, that's going to be equal to this value here. All right, so I'll leave the rest of these relationships for you guys to go through and, and, and do and to fill out this regression table. 